Hello, I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required, and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. Unreasonableness. I'm currently working on writing some stuff about how to survive as an enterprise architect. Slightly different take on the subject, and meant as a bit of practical advice for, for individuals, and perhaps also gently reassuring people that what they feel is not unique. One of the pieces of advice I found myself relying upon in my career has been, and perhaps a little too much if I'm honest, is what not to do. And that is, don't just answer a question because you were asked. As EAs, we feel compelled to solve problems, answer inquiries, always be helpful, at least I think we do. And I'm not saying you need to answer, I don't know, but I'll find out for you either. I'm simply saying respond with something like, I'm not answering that. Yes, when I did it, I got called unreasonable at times, awkward even, but just like a teacher or parent or mentor, you know that sometimes you need the person asking you to learn for themselves or else they'll constantly make it your problem, which distracts you from what adds most value in your role. So go on, try it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Toolkit Tuesday. As you've seen from the video, I'm Steve Nunn. I have the pleasure of being the president and CEO of the Open Group. And uh, as I say, thank you for joining us wherever you are in the world today. And my thanks, as always, our thanks, as always, to Paul Herman of IBM for his EA Minute there. Um, that's an interesting experiment, isn't it? I'm not going to answer that question. Um, we should all try it. Um, excellent. Um, so, moving to uh, today, we have our main theme today is uh, the use of the TOGAF standard in streamlining the adoption of cloud technologies. But before we get there, um, we just a bit of housekeeping. Um, if you have a question for our speaker today, then uh, please use the Q and A channel. Uh, which you will find if it's not obvious on your uh, on your screen right now. If you click on the three little dots in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, that will give you the chance to um, pull up the Q&A channel. So please put those there. Uh, I will ask those uh, of the speaker or as many as I can um, of those who, that come in. We also have the chat channel, which I can see people are using and uh, love to hear. We uh, we we uh, are very much a global uh, we have a global audience for this and the Open Group is very much a global organization. So please let us know where in the world you're joining us from and uh, uh, put that in the chat channel. Use that to communicate with uh, any other attendees. So uh, one other thing before we get going, and I will mention this at the uh, at the end and there will be a, a slide at the end too, but um, we have an exciting event coming up. Uh, in a couple of weeks, July 29th to 31st, um, we have uh, the latest uh, event of the Open Group, and it's called Next Gen Digital for the Tech Aid, and uh, it's uh, going to be held in New Delhi. Uh, so uh, anyone who is, uh, any of you who are able to join us, we'd love to see you there. Um, we'll, there'll also, of course, be uh, the opportunity to uh, see these uh, presentations uh, remotely too. But um, a, a plug for that. We'd love to see you there. And if you are on this uh, call today and you uh, show up at the event, please come and find me. I'll be there. Uh, and uh, uh, it'd be lo lovely to uh, chat to you and hear what you think uh, about Toolkit Tuesday. So without further ado, I've said what the topic is, uh, use, uh, using the TOGAF standard to guide and streamline the adoption of cloud technologies. And to talk us through that today, 
uh, we have the pleasure of being joined by Vinita um, Kazliwal, who is the direct, a director at Peritos Solutions. Um, Vinita has a total experience of over, over 15 years in the industry, uh, former IBM and Deloitte employee, and worked for both private and government clients. Uh, she is an enterprise architect with deep expertise in custom and ERP application development, TOGAF certified, I'm pleased to say, and also uh, four certifications from SAP and also uh, two AWS cloud certifications as well, as well as Google and Azure certified. So um, Vinita knows what she's talking about. So uh, over to you, Vinita. Welcome. Uh, sorry, can you guys hear me? We can now, yes. That's okay, great. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for introducing me and welcome everybody. I hope you have a good understanding of what we are trying to say in terms of how the TOGAP aligns with the cloud standards. So I'll go to the next slide. So the agenda for today pretty much is establishing how the cloud specific architecture principle visions align with each other, understanding the key principles of TOGAP standards, and the same for the well architect and cloud adoption framework, which I have um, mostly used in all of my cloud related projects and how all of them align together with TOGAP is what we are going to talk about. Then uh, planning data storage, security and compliance in the cloud, selecting the appropriate cloud infrastructure components and services, the key components being the cloud services for infra and data and how DevSecOps needs to be the key component here in managing the cloud infrastructure. And finally, how you make that transition to the cloud enabled enterprise architecture and how do you plan for the transition? So what you see here right now is the TOGAF standard for enterprise application. And uh, this particular block will talk about the business architecture domain and IT solution architecture domain. Each of these have its own building blocks like the business capability model, business process model, data model, and business role model. And similarly on the IT solution architecture side, it talks about the solution capability model, process model, data model, and application role model. Now we tailor this as per the client specific requirement and it happens in a legal like modularized approach where the services build the modular framework alongside the TOCAF standard for client projects. So I'll just showcase how we do that in terms of uh, let's say the TOCAP standard alignment with the SAP application or implementation projects that we started out with. Uh, the process starts with the request for architecture, architectural work. And as you can see in the uh, boxes, uh, in the circles in uh, the white, they are the TOCAP standards and how it aligns where a customer requests for an input artifact. And then we start with the architecture vision or the requirements management phase on the TOCAP side. Then we move on to the business architecture, application data architecture, and technology architecture. And finally, the opportunities and solution and migration planning leads to a formal architecture roadmap. And with this, we get like a list of work breakdown structure we need to target and getting started with the implementation. So a business blueprint document is what gets prepared using the TOCAF standards and greatly helps in alignment of SAP implementation as well as support projects. The other framework that we tightly align is the cloud adoption framework with the TOCAF standards. The cloud adoption consists of the strategy, uh, defined strategy phase where you understand and establish what is the requirements in terms of uh, the client's business outcomes, justification and prioritizing of the product, of the project, and this aligns with the architecture vision phase. Then we move on to the plan stage where you define what is the digital estate initial organization alignment and the skills readiness plan, which aligns fairly well with the business architecture and information system architecture phase. When you are ready to get started, we work on the technology architecture opportunities and solutions and different sets of adoption, which you can do via migrate and innovate option where you can, it could be like an on-premise to cloud migration or a new cloud uh, implementation project where you work towards implementation governance using different cloud specific services and innovate using the best practice validation and process improvement in the cloud framework in the cloud framework 
Then coming to the govern stage, we talk about like methodology, benchmark and best practices, which is the architecture change management and how the end users need to adopt this to actually go live with the new changes onto the cloud. And finally, managing the business outcome through baseline ops maturity model. So if you've heard about the cloud adoption framework and have used that on the cloud, aligning that with TOCAV standard greatly helps in reducing your time to go to market, adopting the enterprise architecture, as well as speeding things onto the cloud. This is the next framework for the, uh, which is basically the pillars of well-architected framework and how it aligns with the TOCAV standards. Now, in using this, we've, uh, we've categorized the different well-architect pillars, as they call it, which is like the operation excellence, security, reliability, performance efficiency, cost optimization, and sustainability. In the operation excellence, you uh, mainly focus on the implementation governance, which is uh, similar to how you do any uh, cloud product with cloud implementation project, which is ensuring that you have the right tools for the DevSecOps and uh, you are able to do monitoring and ongoing implementation related specific objects like uh, you need to ensure that the uh, model for the cloud has been selected appropriately, taking into account the size, the benefits that it has to the customer and their operational cost is reduced. The next one is the security where you baseline the business architecture, information system architecture, and ensure that you have the right building blocks to, uh, which is a, actually a very primary concern for the clients when they move on to the cloud. So establishing these architecture and ensuring that it is resilient towards any external attacks and the data is secure is one of the key important feature that you need to uh, incorporate in the cloud architecture. Then the reliability, performance efficiency, and cost optimization strongly aligns with the TOCAF principles of technology architecture, opportunity and solution and migration planning. Uh, before you start, we generally go into the cost optimization as well as the cost planning on how it would be transitioning to the cloud, what the cost would look like and what the uh, final outcome would look like in terms of the efficiency and reliability of the cloud. And finally, in the sustainability um, pillar, of the Will Architect framework, it aligns with the architecture vision and the architecture change management. And how all of this tightly, uh, tightly goes together is when you implement a solution for, let's say, a web application, migrate onto the cloud, or you're just looking for a whole of your custom application uh, currently running on one cloud moving to another. So it depends um, on what the use case would be, but the principles pretty much remains the same. Then uh, a key feature in moving to the cloud is the planning of the data storage, security, and compliance in the cloud. All three frameworks, the TOCAV standard, well architect, and cloud adoption framework are pretty much aligned in terms of the baseline architecture they need. In terms of the data storage planning, we have like the data architecture, data governance, security, security architecture, and compliance management. And the same with the well architect framework where we have like data performance efficiency, the cost filler, security, reliability, and uh, the cost effective framework, which helps in ensuring that uh, we plan the migration with a focus on maintaining and improving these efficiencies during and after the transition. Lastly, in the cloud adoption framework, we've seen the focus lies prim primarily on the strategy and the governance as well as the plan. So when you plan the data storage, security, and compliance, the key factors that comes into account is the selecting of the right set of services for the DevSecOps. So as you can see here, the, the development tools incorporates like the CICD pipelines, the GitLab, the AWS code pipeline, Azure DevOps, and SDKs. Uh, you can also see that there are different kinds of repos that you can use like the GitLab, the SDK specific to a software development kit that you're trying to implement, or maybe you already have like a particular uh, operations that you're using on the cloud. And it helps in terms of aligning your requirements to using a standard service that the cloud has to offer. All these get stored in a central repository using the development tools. And you do ensure that your code um, is not just, uh, you know, protected towards the external threats and attacks, 
but also you have the versioning as well as the cloud deployment tools that you use for managing and migrating the data onto the cloud. The second most important, um, as I mentioned before, is the security. And uh, with that, there are the different kinds of tools that are available, which is for the scanning, detection, response, data protection, compliance, as well as network and application protection. So specific to the cloud, uh, there's a lot of concern when moving to the cloud and when we adopt the TOCAP framework along with uh, uh, any other cloud adoption or the Well Architect one, the key concern for moving to the cloud is the security. So with the right set of tools and explaining to the client how an end-to-end -end, uh, process of moving to the cloud would look like, it helps to smoothen out the process quite a bit. Then the last one is the uh, operations optimization services, which includes like your monitoring the cloud solution, the cloud specific tools, using the IAM, which is identity and access management and compliance tools, which could be like a industry specific tool, like maybe a HIPAA compliant tool, or if you are into um, particular security standards, then they could be uh, NIST frameworks, ISO frameworks, any other regulatory framework like SOX or uh, different set of uh, available frameworks like uh, the security, particular security pillar, which can be used in the operations and helps you implement these services on the cloud efficiently. Now, finally, how you manage the transition. You have to plan and evaluate your workloads to understand the high risks that occur with the architecture and you also need to select the right framework that works just not for the specific, uh, maybe a process that you're trying to implement onto the cloud, but also over the long term, how you need to manage and migrate, not just one workload, but a series of transition towards the cloud. I think I see a couple of questions there, um, but maybe we are going to take that up at a later stage. So um, I'll just uh, park them for now. Uh, we also see a lot of uh, specific technical and business challenges and removing some heavy lifting with following the best practices, which makes your path easier. So a structured approach and a clear and structured methodology, ensuring that all the aspects of the cloud and the TOGAF enterprise architecture align with each other has helped us improve and uh, manage the transition to the cloud in a much more smoother manner. We've previously also helped uh, clients in migrating to the cloud using TOGAF. And a lot of our applications have a strong focus on ensuring that the right framework is selected at the start. So we don't get into a lot of failed uh, projects that happen because either the cloud doesn't bring the right kind of output that the client requires, or it doesn't even uh, relate to what the initial requirements and the benefits that were envisioned during the cloud projects initiation uh, getting realized. So always better to have a standard like TOGAP aligned with the cloud specific frameworks to ensure that you make the right transition. I think that's all. Um, yep, over to you. Anita, that, that was great. That's a whistle stop tour of, uh, of the topic here. So thank you, you got a, a lot of information uh, conveyed in a short time there. Um, we appreciate that and I know um, our, our audience will. So thank you very much. So. Yes, uh, a, a few questions. Um, one that just came in, actually, I, I saw, which is a question about what about automated security scanning and testing tools? Uh, are they part of the DevSecOps services? Is the specific? Yeah, they definitely are. So when we talk about like the DevSecOps, it talks about the development tools, the security, and the operations. The security scanning and testing tool. Uh, so, sorry, there are a few more questions coming in. So, yeah, the security testing tools are basically related to, you could have like uh, network testing, you could be automating your testing with the uh, different set of tools like WAF uh, uh, enabled framework where you have, you know, like protection towards external threats and uh, you can also use automated testing, uh, which is a inbuilt part of Azure DevOps as well as AWS toolkits which offer these kind of services as part of the standard framework. Yep. Okay, great. Um, and there was a request, a specific request. I know the slides will be available, but um, 
a, a request if you could pop up your first slide again if that doesn't create too much um uh, of a challenge um because there was some uh, oh. some interference for at least uh, at least one of our attendees there um to show the first slide is that possible um Benita or maybe Jim I don't have that. the access now uh, maybe I do so as I say we'll, we won't uh, we won't dive into it all uh, ask you to do it all over again because uh, these uh, the, the recording and uh, and therefore the slides will be available to everyone who's who's registered. So, um, but thank you for the interest, and uh, we've got a thank you from the person who asked. So um, that, that's great. So, um, next question then, uh, Vinita, if I may. Um, the uh, you, you talked about the importance of getting the right framework in place from the from the choosing the right framework up front saves a lot of aggravation and time and failed projects down downstream so um can you talk a little about how getting that uh how the use of the togef standard helps in the selection of that framework um how do you yeah, use it? so the cloud has the latest set of tools and technology but in order for you to optimize and be able to utilize those tools you need to have a structured methodology in place right. and this modular approach which TOGAF um, provides which is both like a standard but customizable to client specific requirements helps in integrating these new technologies and uh, the industry standards understand what TOGAF offers and it does enhance the system resilience which includes like risk management and helps to mitigate potential threats it also involves stakeholders from the start and with the collaborative approach that uh, you know we can have from the beginning it helps in just innovating at pace and also in early issue identification right okay thank you very much um and uh, obviously you you showed a, a a slide as well which mapped the pillars um mm -hmm. uh, onto uh the TOGEF standard or the or the other way around whichever way you want you want to look at it which I think uh, will be useful for people who have questions along along those lines of uh, at what stage in this process do I uh, do I use which uh, which part so I'll move on to the next question then um uh what what role does the you talk about the well architected framework what role does that play in in optimizing workloads for cost and and particularly I, I was interested to see the sustainability pillar there um so this uh, the cost being a key factor in determining whether to move to the cloud or not so the well architect framework specifically emphasizes on resource management and cost monitoring and scaling strategies which reduces the unnecessary expenses there is a, a best practice of getting a cost calculator link which both any of the cloud providers, let's say Google, AWS, or uh, even Azure provides, which you can upfront understand what your cost is gonna be, how that promotes the efficient practices. And uh, it also helps in aligning of, uh, you know, like when you use shared resources, they are more energy efficient and they are more sustainable. Mm -hmm. So it minimizes the environment impact. Now, when we talk about smaller workload, that may not be like a huge impact as such, but I'm talking about like high power computing where there are supercomputers and let's say a medical processing involved uh, for TB of tons and tons of data. When you use a cloud specific product, it definitely emphasizes your, you know, your focus on using energy efficient practices. Right. And that's what the sustainability um and as well as the cost efficiency does uh with those pillars and this is a continuously improved um process where you need to do continuous improvement and you can obviously keep optimizing uh but a baseline says that you do it at the start okay that's great i know the uh sustainability topic is obviously uh, uh uppermost in people's minds um and uh we've we've heard at other events uh that we've from other other presenters that uh, increasingly the um, sustainability of uh, a particular cloud offering is quite influential in uh, a, a customer or a client's choice um, where they want to do things as they're all planning. So 
Uh, last question um, that's uh, just come in, and uh, it, it, which is, uh, wouldn't technology architecture also contribute to the security pillar? Um, sorry, I didn't understand that. So, in in your, I think I think it's on the screen actually the pillars, and I think uh, one of I, I'm interpreting it as the technology architecture phase of uh, of the TOGAF ADM. Uh, wouldn't that be relevant to the security pillar? Could you use that um, contributing in there? Because uh, I think you've got business architecture and information system architecture yeah. uh, on there. So, so the security pillar, uh, when you do a baseline business architecture, information system architecture, that's where you uh, map the security specific features from the cloud. Now, these can be like both tools that you need to implement as well as the processes that you need to um, align with the security pillar in order for you to understand how uh, both of these will integrate and work towards creating a workload which is not just resilient uh, internally, like it doesn't break anything when you move things to the production, but mm -hmm. also externally where it doesn't get threats and attacks from uh, if you've heard about DDoS attacks and stuff like that. So. They are uh, as, as well as ransomware and stuff. Th those things are pretty much very important, um, both from a security standpoint and also uh, more specifically towards the e-commerce application or applications that have got like huge amount of data and uh, yeah, can that are exposed onto the internet. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you. And I said that was the last question. If I can, I'm going to try and slide the la this very last question in that's come in. Um, with, a, with a bit of a, a preamble, uh, enterprise architecture has focused on centralized control over IT infrastructure, uh, but postmodern um, enterprises are more decentralized with business units having more autonomy over their technology choices. Uh, how can the TOGAF standard help in this situation with where their things are more decentralized? Um, see, TOGAF is help, essentially, it helps in decentralizing. De um, because it's a flexible framework, it supports autonomy and it helps in aligning with the overall business goals. Uh, one of the key features of TOGAFs is its modular approach. So you can adopt relevant parts of the framework that maybe fit the specific needs, and you know you'll have like uh, you'll have uh, easy um, easy enough uh, use case to promote flexibility and autonomy in that sense. But it also establishes a governance process and standards. So it has got like interoperability interoperab across different units. So you can still have like a, a particular unit adhering to a specific standard, but you can overall maintain a cohesive enterprise architecture. Uh, if you understand what I'm trying to say by using parts of it that aligns in an overarching business strategy. So that way it in, improves in facilitating a coordinated innovation and efficiency in the entire organization right. um, which of course improves the stakeholder engagement and communication channels uh, does that answer your question oh it absolutely does and i think we're seeing that it, 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 it answers the question for the person who asked it which is even more important so um we will leave it. We will leave it there. Um, Vinita, thank you so much for uh, uh, joining us today and uh, and getting through um, that explanation and giving time for questions. It was great that we had that opportunity. And uh, as I say, these uh, these will be available. We do post our Toolkit Tuesday uh, special editions on the Open Group YouTube channel, so um, you'll be able to uh, see those. But meanwhile, um, a a big thank you. Um, from the open group, uh, Vinita Karsliwal. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. So just before we go, folks, um, one our, our next uh, Toolkit Tuesday special edition will be on August the 13th. And the topic that day will be uh, recognize your career journeys for you and your employees by joining Open Professions. So the Open Group has the Open Professions program, which is a type of certification. It's a uh, a skills and experience based certification as opposed to the knowledge based certifications that many of you know us for, like TOGAF and Archimate and IT for IT, etc. So uh, do join us on uh, August the 13th if you're able to. Uh, we'd love to have you. And meanwhile, a, uh, a reminder uh, for the Open Group uh, event 
coming up in New Delhi, and uh, it culminates on the on day three with the Open Group India Awards, which is uh, always uh, a very interesting um, event with really useful, meaningful case studies on the application of our standards uh, in the real world um, to great effect and delivering great value. So. Anyone who can join us uh, there or virtually, we'd love to uh, love to have you with us. Meanwhile, thank you for joining today. Um, I, I hope uh, you keep safe and well wherever you are and uh, love to see you next time on August the 13th. Bye for now.